Hi, good evening, everyone. So, good evening, everyone. Welcome to an academy. So, one very important thing before we start with the discussion that yes, do not mix. Do not miss the grand test which is going to be held on 17th of October. It's a must, 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 must give for all. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, Prince. Hi. How are you? So, yes, you should try to enroll yourself for special classes and make maximum use of the features we have. We have an effective question bank containing 25,000 MCQs and plus. So, let us just start straight forward. Let us start with this session of what? Okay. Yeah. Come on. Hello, hello, Krishna. Hello, hello. Hi, hi, Krishna. So tell me about something about this. Identify the condition and identify the surgery being done. All except are true. So we have an MCQ. We have MCQ also for this. So tell me a few important things about this. So identify the condition, identify the surgery being done and answer me this MCQ also. Yeah. Just a minute. One student, tell me, yeah. So, all except are true for this condition. So, if you see this condition, first of all, yeah, what is this? This is a midline thyroid swelling or midline neck swelling, yeah. Either it could be a midline thyroid swelling or midline neck swelling. But if you see, you can see by the surgery that this is a what thyroglossal duct cyst with the excision of hyoid bone with this. So this surgery is being done for persistent thyroglossal duct which undergoes a cystic transformation. So let us try to understand. Now you have a midline, a midline neck swelling. When we talk about midline neck swelling, what are the important points that we have to understand? It could be either, it could be either a thyroid swelling it could be either a thyroglossal duct cyst. Now, how to differentiate between them? How to approach them? This is very, 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 very important. You have to see one classical thing, the movement. So, the movement is very, very, very important. So, the movement with deglutition, the movement with deglutition and the movement, movement, with deglutition is point number one and the second is movement with protrusion of the tongue protrusion of tongue now one very important thing that you have to understand that be it thyroid or be it any swelling which is con which is enclosed under the deep cervical fascia this is always going to have movement with deglutition but remember a thyroglossal duct cyst is connected to the base of the tongue so you will have movement with deglutition also and movement with protrusion of the tongue also. So yes, if it is a thyroglossal duct cyst, it will be having movement with the protrusion of tongue as well as the protrusion of, as well as the deglutition. Whereas a thyroid swelling will have only movement with deglutition. Now let us talk about the various important points and then we will discuss about all except are true. Yeah. So when we talk about the miscellaneous things, when we talk about the miscellaneous things about thyroglossal duct cysts. So today we are going to discuss on this topic, thyroglossal, thyroglossal duct cyst, thyroglossal duct cyst. Let us try to understand this thyroglossal duct cyst. What is the concept of thyroglossal? It is persistent, persistent thyroglossal duct persistent thyroglossal duct with cystic transformation with cystic transformation now why this happens 
first of all you have to understand why this persistent thyroglossal duct and then why the cystic transformation happened answer is what is the concept of persistent thyroglossal duct you have to understand if anything has to regress it has to regress by the eighth week of life because if anything is present by the eighth week of life it will be seen in the newborn also so the one very important point that we have to see is failed regression so failed regression of thyroglossal duct of thyroglossal duct by what week of life so failed regression of thyroglossal duct by eighth week of life now what is the utility of this thyroglossal duct yeah let us try to understand this this is very simple now you know i know everyone knows that there is something which is known as foramen cecum so the medial part the embryonic part is known as enlarge so the medial enlarge of the thyroid is located at the level of foramen of cecum so foramen cecum or you can say the base of the tongue yeah the second thing that you have to understand this medial enlarge has to fuse with the lateral enlarges so these are the lateral enlarges which are later on going to contribute to the parafollicular cells so they are from the ultimo brachial bodies so the ultimo brachial bodies are going to give rise to what this lateral enlarge now the lateral enlarges don't move from its place but what happens the medial enlarge has to descend down now who helps in this descent who helps in this descent the descent is with a rope which is known as thyro which is known as thyroglossal duct cyst so remember the development of thyroid the development of thyroid starts at what week of life the development starts at third week of life third week of life and the fusion of the medial with the lateral enlarge is completed by the fifth week of life now try to understand after fifth week of life this lateral enlarge the lateral enlarge fuses with the medial enlarge and therefore this thyroglossal duct should regress is that clear no so one again very important point is the regression the regression of the regression of thyroglossal duct yeah starts by starts by what week of life by fifth week of life by fifth week of life and it is completed by completed by what week of life eighth week of life anyhow anyhow if it fails to regress it will be present as persistent thyroglossal duct now what is the problem why does it convert there are a lot of things which are actually present as vestigial components then why does this thyroglossal duct present to you with a cystic transformation now one very important thing for that is to understand the concept of epithelium now when we talk about the epithelium we have pseudo stratified pseudo stratified so we have pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium ciliated columnar epithelium yeah now what is going to happen with this so pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium now what is going to happen with this this is going to cause this cyst or duct to slowly and slowly slowly and slowly secrete some collection yeah and over the time what will happen this collection this collection will increase in size yes or no this collection will increase in size and this will undergo a what cystic transformation this will undergo a cystic transformation you have to understand one very important point that thyroglossal duct is present at the time of birth but do you know the cyst formation the cyst formation occurs around second to third decade are you getting this it's the second to third decade now what will happen so you can understand therefore cyst is congenital now what is going to be a future of this cyst what is future of a balloon 
if you try if you try to inflate it and if you keep on inflating it it has to rupture so the cyst will have a rupture either this rupture either the cause of this rupture is spontaneous or this rupture is iatrogenic tempted by the surgeon yeah now the problem is when a cyst ruptures the cyst should collapse here also it collapses here also it collapses yes or no and for one or two weeks it's okay but do you know these are active cells which will keep on producing something meanwhile the granulation plug which was formed will be force evacuated by this and ultimately patient will now start to have the collection again this is going to happen again 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 and again and ultimately what will happen ultimately what will happen in this yeah this will get epithelized this will get epithelized yeah and as it gets epithelized as it gets epithelized what will happen this will convert itself into a fistula it will convert itself into a fistula so the cyst will convert itself into a fistula so remember therefore the the cyst is congenital the fistula is acquired the fistula is acquired are you getting this now what is the location what is the location remember one very important point the most common location the most common location yes it is infrahyoid it is infrahyoid more than yes supra or you can say juxta juxta hyoid yeah. again one very important thing what is the management what is the management but the majority of them are located along the hyoid majority of them are located along the hyoid so what is the management the management is n block cystectomy what do you mean by this n block cystectomy what do you mean by this n block cystectomy answer is removal of removal of cyst along with the central hyoid along with the central hyoid is that clear? removal of cyst along with the central hyoid and this surgery is known as cyst trunk surgery this surgery is known as cyst trunk surgery again when very important and small concept is there any risk of malignancy answer is generally no less than 1% less than 1% risk of malignancy if occurs if occurs papillary is the most common papillary cancer is the most common the next is others follicular can be seen anaplastic can be seen what can never be seen medullary thyroid cancer remember medullary thyroid cancer cannot be seen because it's a neuroendo neuroendocrine or you can see a neuroectodermal tumor so mtc can never occur let us read the question now lined by columnar epithelium all except are true this is absolutely true may be associated with mtc absolutely false absolutely false infrahyoid is the most frequent site absolutely true n block cystectomy can be done absolutely true is that clear or no so today we'll keep a very short discussion it's dashera you also enjoy and take rest i just planned it uh, so we'll every day we'll have a small topic and we'll discuss on that so i hope you enjoyed this topic and yes if you really liked it and if you are planning to join an academy do join the plus platform plus program we have a lot of things for you and use the code dr dikshit or you can use the code surgery life yeah so do give your feedback feedbacks in the comment section how you what 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 are your feedbacks about the class and till then bye, -bye.